Thank you very much, Sue. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my great pleasure to be able to welcome you to Manchester and the IOSH 2012 Conference and Exhibition. In not just the Year of the Dragon, but the Year of the Olympics. In common with the Olympic Games, IOSH's annual conference and exhibit draws people from all around the world. Although I do suspect it was much easier to get tickets to Albion events than theirs. In fact, the delivery of the Olympic Village in London, with zero work-related fatalities, will be one of the great health and safety successes we'll celebrate this week. It's quite an incredible achievement for our profession, and one I hope gets the recognition it deserves. We're delighted to see you all here today at what is a showcase for good health and safety globally, and an opportunity for you to network with practitioners from other parts of the world. Sue's already mentioned the ability for you to text in some questions, but for those of you that are on social media or Twitterers, you can Twitter uh, using the hashtag IOSH, sorry, hash, H-A-S-H, IOSH, 2012. Now, I'm pleased to announce that even in these tough economic times, this is our largest ever conference turnout for what promises to be a stimulating two days of debate, activities, exhibits, and networking opportunities for us all. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank our conference organizing committee for their hard work and our sponsors and supporters for their crucial backing. I'd also like to thank the team here at Manchester for delivering a fittingly impressive venue for an event of this stature. This year, our conference theme is changing perceptions. And what we'd like to do over the next few days is to sow the seeds to get conference visitors, the media, politicians, and the public to think long and hard about their perceptions of health and safety. So, to those employers who think safety and health is still the responsibility of their safety and health professionals, within their own organisations, let's remind them that it's their and their employees' responsibilities too. To critics who claim safety and health stifles productivity and reduces profit, let's tell them about companies like E.ON and British Gas who save millions of pounds each year with good occupational health and safety initiatives. To those who think we've created too many laws relating to health and safety in the UK, let's remind them that the number of regulations has actually halved since the introduction of the Health and Safety at Work Act. And recent reviews have confirmed that our regulations are by and large fit for purpose. To those who tell us we can't afford health and safety, as safety and health practitioners, we must make it clear that they simply can't afford to be without it. Absenteeism, low morale, low productivity, a tarnished reputation, a rise in accident rates, all potential outcomes for cutting corners with health and safety. And to our friends in the media, sorry Sue, who say, health and safety's gone mad. We have this simple message for you. Check your facts. Is it really a story about health and safety, or is it another tale of someone attempting to avoid civil liability or insurance costs? Now, I think it's fair to say that Jeremy Clarkson isn't known for championing health and safety causes. We're led to believe he doesn't care much for health and safety. Well, earlier this year, JC wrote a one-page article in a magazine in which he said, when looking for a car for his daughter, her health and safety was his number one consideration. And on that bombshell, as Clarkson might say, and in all seriousness, it's a familiar story. Health and safety is never seen as a joke when it's there to protect our nearest and dearest. But we do have our work cut out for us. A chasm still exists in some areas of society between the perception of health and safety and the reality. 
I know I'm preaching to the converted here, but real health and safety has never been so important as it is to our future. And the next two days is part of IOSH's ongoing commitment to the cause. Part of our commitment to challenge at every turn those who undermine the great contribution real health and safety makes to society. Recently, Professor Lofsted published his review on UK health and safety regulations. The government accepted his recommendations and the health and safety executive now have in front of them the massive task of implementing those recommendations. And when they do, we'll need to be ready. The world economy is still struggling to free itself from the clutches of recession and governments around the world are still push pushing through spending cuts. Against this backdrop, it's more important than ever for employers and health and safety professionals to focus on pragmatic risk management to protect their workers' lives and their health and to banish the myths and change perceptions for good. IOSH continues to be a frontrunner in making the case for health and safety. Whether it's in the corridors of Whitehall or Brussels, the boardrooms of industry, or council offices across the UK and beyond. Last month, when our Prime Minister was doing his best impression of St George, slaying the health and safety monster, IOSH's response that his comments were appalling and unhelpful were widely covered by the media. You might think the use of words like that would see us cast away from Whitehall and Westminster, but you'd be wrong. A few weeks ago, I accompanied several IOSH members of staff to the Palace of Westminster to make the case for health and safety, showcasing the Olympic Delivery Authority's excellent achievements. And we were joined there by the Employment Minister, Chris Grayling, his, his opposite number on the Labour benches, Stephen Timms, as well as several other high-profile MPs. I think we've earned the respect of government in the UK by mounting a compelling case for real, genuine, pragmatic health and safety. That event at Westminster was the latest initiative in IOSH's life savings campaign. This is our ongoing drive to promote the case that good health and safety not only saves lives, but it can also save organisations money. We recently took the same message to the European Parliament and later this year, following an invitation by Professor Lofsted, IOSH will be involved in an exciting initiative which will help shape the health and safety future within Europe.